Hey everybody, it is Liz with Liz Art Finds and we are here today with haul number 36. It's gonna be a little bit different from our usual videos in that it is an auction haul. It is actually half of an auction haul. It is the first half, I'll show you the next half next week. Um, I did an auction or I picked up auction stuff because I have a show coming up at the end of August on Fenton. And I only had four Fenton pieces when I signed up for the show and I need to find more Fenton. So thankfully the auction house had a bunch of Fenton or some Fenton this week. And they, um, they, what they did is they grouped it in with other things. So there was like a lot of 11 pieces of glass with one piece of Fenton and another lot of 11 pieces of glass with one piece of Fenton. And, um, the other lots that I'll show you next week, there was a little more Fenton, but um, I went and bid on, on them and um, I won some things. I didn't win all of the things, but I won some things. So we're gonna go through today the two lots that I found, um, or the first two lots that I, that I got. Um, the first lot um, that I'm gonna show you came out to $3.82 a piece. The second lot was $1.40 a piece, but we'll go through that when I get closer. I want to just interject that I forgot last week to go through the solds. So I'm going to go through the solds that sold the week before, like for last week's video, and then I'll go through the solds that sold for this week's video. I'm recording this video a few days early, so there's only like a few solds so far this week um, due to some upcoming travel that I have. So anyway, let's get rocking. So these are the solds from, that I forgot to show you last week. So the Lily Pulitzer Cups sold on eBay. I bought them for $2.99. They sold for $16.99. This beautiful stork on a log sculpture I had found for $4.99, $4.99. It sold for $25. The goat's tile. Now, this one I bought a couple years ago at an antique mall. I paid up for it. I paid $10 for it. It sold for $15.99 and it took a while to sell. So note to self and to all y'all, um, don't pay $10 for decorative tile unless it's for yourself. Um, I definitely paid too much for this, even though it's fantastic. Um, I did end up making a little bit of money on it, but uh, I probably could have left that one. The other one that sold, this is a Leapfrog Story Pad, and I guess they don't make these anymore. I had found this for $3.99. It sold for $29.99 to a wonderful, wonderful woman who was buying her granddaughter a birthday gift. Apparently, the they, there were two kids, and one of them had one, and the other child really wanted one, and the purchaser was so happy to find this. And I got um, news once they received it that it worked, and the uh, little girl was super happy. So that was exciting. And then the other things that sold, um, these two sold on knickknacks. They are two glass egg paperweights. One was Mount St. Helens Ash. The other one was Glass Eye Studio. This one sold for $17.99. This one sold for $19.99 over on knickknacks. So that was the week before. This week so far, I've only sold three things, um, but again, I haven't been listing a ton. Um, so I'm really happy with the, the solds that I've been getting. Um, this pitcher, 10 cups, house and wear. I've had this on my eBay store for, gosh, two years or more. So I was really happy that it found its forever home. I paid $4.99 for it. It sold for $13.99 on, $13 on a best offer. This Lucite um, Queen Anne's Lace uh, paperweight piece uh, I had bought for $2.99. It sold for $24.99. And this stoneware mug I had found for $2.99 and it sold for $16.99. So yeah, some good good sold so far. I mean, uh, just your everyday average little, little sales. So we're gonna go through the two lots that I found. There's some pieces I really don't know much about and I apologize in advance for that. Um, a lot of these pieces are older and a lot of these pieces are more rare and there just aren't a lot of good, um, there's not a lot of great information out there. So for some of these, I still need to do more research and I need to ask some questions of people. Um, so I'm gonna start with one I don't know anything about. Um, so this piece 
It's gorgeous. It's satin glass and it's hand painted on satin glass. Um, when I do this in Google search, I get a um, no match is what comes back. There's not even anything close. So I just don't know anything about it yet. I think it's old. Um, it may be antique. I don't know. And I don't even want to guess to value. Um, so I will be back with you guys when I have more information um, on that one. But one that I can tell you about, look at this. This is antique, believe it or not. It is a beautiful vase. It is from Czechoslovakia. It's got these little stringers that are all the way around and then these perfect circles that are actually cut out of the stringers. They're flat and the stringers just go right up to the edge and just stop, right? So the stringers are there first they, and then these were somehow cut in. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe the circles were like there and the stringers were just laid on perfectly, but the stringer does seem to be in a spiral uh, spiral shape. So however it's done, it was masterful. It's Czechoslovakia and it actually says Czechoslovakia on the bottom here. Um, the manufacturer is Ernst Steinwald and Company. Now there were two main companies back then. The other one was called Kralik. And a lot of the listings on these will say Kralik and Steinwald. But I did find a listing in a catalog that had it as Steinwald. Um, and they have it as product VZ166 um, from the 1920s, okay? Which is amazing, so that makes it antique. I mean, we're in the 2020s right now, right? So incredible, it's just beautiful, it's in perfect condition, there's no issues with it at all. Um, so I paid $3.82 per piece in this lot. Um, the solds on this are 75 to 116, so this alone pays for this lot um, and the next lot actually. So that was really exciting. I knew nothing about it. It just, uh, you know, you do your research when you find all the things and uh, that came up. So then this guy, this is a pink milk glass shell. It is Cambridge glass. Um, it dates, uh, I don't know the date, hmm, 20s-ish. Um, definitely the first part of the 20th century. Um, it is a light pink milk glass. It did not have any painting on it. I have another piece from Cambridge that did, but this is a footed um, shell dish, large. It is called Cambridge Crown Tuscan Style Pink Milk Glass Seashell Large Footed Bowl. Those are the keywords that people are putting in. There was one that sold on a best offer for $140, y'all. Um, and then there's others that are 75 and 80. Um, I think I would put it in the 50 to 80 range um, as an average but it's in excellent condition. And again, you know, I paid $3.82 and will definitely, you know, definitely do well with that. Um, all right, the next piece I have here is a Dutch perfume bottle. And this one is definitely antique. It dates from the, 18, the 19th century, so the 1800s. Um, it is a flash cut glass and sterling. So this is sterling at the top. It, I didn't polish it. Um, it's not in great condition like this this stopper thing is kind of it's got a little rip there um, but it's ruby flash cut glass and sterling um, Dutch like I said um, one sold the perfect condition ones um, where the stoppers were in much better condition um, these the solds are 85 and 75 um, there was one that sold for 250 but it was pristine um, so I don't know. I have to figure out what the value of the sterling is on this. I have to get that cap off and weigh it. Um, it's actually got a little stopper in there, which is kind of cute with a little pull tab. But this thing here, I believe, is also sterling, and then this is sterling. So, at least according to all of the comps. So I gotta get more information on that um, before I list it. But uh, another exciting find in here, right? So then we have this beautiful Murano perfume that I showed you guys last week as a teaser. I believe this dates from the 1980s. It is newer. This floral type of uh, stopper is something that has come out of that area more recently. It's, it's not one of the older ones. Um, it does have the gold dust in the, uh, in the swirly bit here. Um, I'm 
like I said last week, I'm going to keep this one. I love it. Um, I think 40 to 50 on these. Um, one did sell on Etsy for $216, though, on Etsy. The eBay sold are much lower. But yeah, it's kind of exciting. I mean, it's just gorgeous. It's very me. So anyway, whatever it is, um, it definitely also pays for the entire entire lot there. So I'm excited about that one. All right, then a couple of blue Fenton perfumes. These would have had stoppers. These did not come with stoppers. Um, that's, you know, kind of what happens when you do these auction lots a lot of times is they don't take great pictures of all the things. It's a big pile of things on a table. And a lot of times you don't know the condition. You don't really know what you're going to get when you're bidding. Um, but they're beautiful. They're Fenton. Um, they will go in my sale unless I find a whole lot more Fenton between now and August and can just bump them out because, uh, you know, I'd much rather sell things that have stoppers or are complete. But anyway, even without the stoppers, um, they sell like eight to $10 each. Um, so that is still a good thing. Um, all right. Then there's the Citron Square vase. It does not glow. Um, it is square imperial depression glass. This is Mount Vernon imperial glass, canary yellow bug vase. Um, and they only sell 8 to 14. But again, they sell 8 to 14. Um, and I paid $3.82. So at least double my money on that one. Um, and it's really pretty. It's got this fun color. It's like this yellowish, light greenish thing. And it's a heavy piece. And it's you can tell that there's definitely quality there. Um, all right, the next one we're going to talk a little bit about. I thought this was Fenton. This is not Fenton. So apparently both Fenton and Anchor Hawking made a very similar perfume bottle. And the way to tell is on the bottom. There are seam lines. Let me see if I can find them for you. Yeah, there's one south here. So basically on this one, you see north, south, east, and west. So one, two, three, four... It's basically just a thin line where the seams in the mold were. So Anchor Hawking's mold had four seams. Fenton's mold had six seams. So they say that's how you can tell. And also the stopper apparently is a little bit different on the Fenton versus the Anchor Hawking version. So this is an Anchor Hawking hobnail perfume, white moonlight hobnail perfume bottle, something like that. Um, and... Uh, it's normally they'd sell eight to 14, so it's not high resale value. Mine also has a little hairline crack right here. So that's gonna detract even more from the value. So not sure on that, um, maybe five to eight. I'm just not sure. And I'm not sure where or how I will sell that. Um, that may be yard sale piece. It may be, I, I'm not, I'm just not sure what I'm gonna do with that one yet. Um, all right, so next is another piece of Cambridge glass. This is a divided shell vase. It's also a vase dish. Um, this is also pink milk glass. Um, it's painted. And then there would have been this gold paint all the way around. Now you can see there's some wear here. So like the paint is good here, but it is worn off of here. Um, so that does um, detract from the value a little bit. Um, but it's got the painted gold up here. If you look at its feet, it's got these four feet and it's got painted gold around the outside. This dates from the 1920s, okay? And this is the Divided Scalloped Edge Painted Dish Cambridge Glass uh, Crown Tuscan Pink Hand Painted Rose Footed Shell Dish Milk Glass, again, keywords. Um, the last one sold on eBay for $45.95. I'll have to take a look back at the condition of that piece and see where this one compares um, before I list that. So there's that one. Um, then there was this small pink dish. Now I think they came together somehow. I've seen listings that have the big one and some little ones. Um, this only had one little one and you can see remnants of paint. So this would have been painted inside. Um, this one is not. Obviously, that's all worn off. So I, I don't know. I think the, the glass itself still has some value. Um, I think with the painting intact, they were selling in this size around $24. I think maybe 8 to 12 on this just for the glass with the, uh, without the painting um, you know, in this condition. 
So, and also it's, I got some, some sticker schmutz in there. I got to clean up some sticker stickiness. Um, all right, next up, um, actually that is all from the first lot. Okay, so that was the first lot where I basically paid $3.82-ish, um, some $3.81 for the, the lot, for each piece in the lot. Sorry, this next lot, everything is $1.40. There's a lot more pieces. Um, and this one, there's a lot more pieces I know nothing about. But we're going to go through them piece by piece. Um, the first one, boy, it's heavy. So it's heavy because it's still in the box. Um, so this is a plate. It's a dealer plate. So it's actually got the, um, it's got somebody's business card in here where it was purchased. It was purchased from Golden Chalice Antiques in Fredericksburg, Virginia. The back says Nativity Satin, nope, Nativity Stained Glass uh, Dealer's Disc. So this is a dealer disc. That may be more value. It says 155. I don't know if that was the price that they paid. I hope not because um, the value has come down significantly if that's the case, um, or if it's an item number. Now, it's stained glass in the middle, and then it's pewter um, around. Um, it is a nativity scene, which is going to be hard to hard to see without light directly behind it. But um, this is the silver, well, silver? No, it's pewter. Oh, um, sorry, y'all. A 1984, 1984 Vintage U.S. Historical Society Pewter and Stained Glass. The name of this piece is Come Let Us Adore Him. Now, there have been listed and solds on eBay without the box, okay? Um, and the ones without the box are listed and sold in the 10 to 35 range. And because this is in the box, it'll probably be in the 20-ish plus range. Um, so 25 to 35, maybe more, I'm not really sure. Um, I, I need to do a little research into what the dealer's disc uh, means and if it makes it more valuable than some of the ones that are currently listed. So anywho, definitely better than $1.40, so that's exciting. And the next one here, this is a Turkish plate. Um, it was uh, Turkish Airlines, so it has the Turkish Airlines logo in the center. So I don't know if it was a gift to like their um, best customers or their employees or something, but it is a Turkish plate and the style, I'm not going to be able to pronounce this, Pasa, P-A-S-A-B-A-H-C-E. So Basi, Pasa, Basi, bas, I don't know. But it's hand painted, so the back is like enameled on glass, and then this is all painted here, and it's really very beautiful. Um, so the ones that I found online did not have a company logo in the center. So if you are just looking at the Turkish style plates like this, um, they sell in the fifteen to forty dollar range. Um, I don't know if the logo is going to add or detract from that. I need to um, get more information on that. Um, it may be for a collector that that's a very special piece. So I just need to uh, gather more information. And, you know, if I have any feedback to share with you guys in another video, I will definitely let you know what I find out. Um, the next piece is this. And this is actually Westmoreland glass, and it is the base to a fairy lamp. This did not come with the top in the lot that I purchased. So the top, there's a couple different ones that I've found. Some of them have clear glass with the green flowers, and others are just floral, like multicolor floral, and they both have the same green base. This green base alone still sells, and the three that I saw on eBay were like $19.99, 20 and 1995 so pretty consistent right around $20 value on this piece okay um put that there Alrighty, i'm trying to go through these pretty quick so the next one is this owl figurine perfect condition it's got jewel eyes um most of the listings online have this attributed to westmoreland there are other Westmoreland owls that have black eyes, so I need to confirm that this truly was Westmoreland. Um, and there are many, many colors of this owl. Um, this particular color seems to not sell as well as some of the blues and some of the other um, more preferred colors, I guess. So 
I see them sold anywhere from eight to 25. I think this color is probably closer to eight to 14 on him. Okay, um, then my Fenton piece in this lot is this beautiful, it kind of looks like a Jack in the Pulpit, right? Where they have the one side up and the one side down. But this was called a ruffle hat base, I believe. Um, blue, opaline, I think. Don't quote me on that. Um, ruffle, hat, dish, something like that. Um, and I see the solds on these in the 20s. Um, I need to do a little bit more research, but we have confirmed with the Fenton, um, the Fenton group on Facebook that this, this is Fenton. And for a while, I wasn't sure. Um, my first, when I first did a search, it came up as another company. Um, so I was getting mixed, mixed answers, so I had to ask the experts. But they confirmed it was indeed Fenton, and that piece will be in my Fenton show. That is a gorgeous piece. It will be in my Fenton show at the end of August. Um, all right, so next, I think we did all of the ones on this page. Um, I'm going to jump ahead, actually, to the Murano piece. So in this lot, there was this beautiful pink Murano bowl. And I did confirm it with the Murano group. Um, there is gold dust in there, which is really hard to see. But there is a layer of this gold sparkly dust in there. Um, there was a version of this that was done by Barbini that was kind of like a candy dish uh, circus tent. So there were like the stripes of the different colors. It's weird because like there's this one place of gold, you might be able to see it, where it actually looks like that. But then there's no more that are like that all the way around. So just really hard to know. So the two things that people have said are either Barbini or... Um, AVEM, A-V-E-M, which is art vet, oh, vet, 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 something of Murano. So basically they were importers uh, to the U.S. of Murano glass and they represented a lot of the different furnaces and they brought the glass over here. So they had a separate catalog, the A-V-E-M catalog. Um, so this is cased. Basically it's got a layer of pink between two pieces of clear. Um, and then it's got that beautiful sparkle. Um, so the Pink Murano Bowl, um, these have sold in the 50 to 65 range. There was one I saw that was over 85, um, but I think high 50s, low 60s is probably a good number for this particular piece. So that's exciting, right? You pay $1.40. Um, okay, next piece in this lot is this little Hummel glass. Gerbel is the company in Germany. Um, that did the little um, figurines that you may be familiar with, and they actually did some glasses too. And this one is a Lederhosen boy. Um, so I have wine glass with person stem is what I wrote as a note to myself, but it's the Hummel Goebel figural stem West German wine goblet with gold trim. And the, the name that has been listed online is Lederhosen boy. So he's wearing Lederhosen. Um, they only sell around 15, but he's still a fun little, uh, fun little piece. Um, okay, is that all? Nope. We get the one exciting one, and then I'm just going to show you the remaining ones that I know nothing about yet. Let me just pull those five over here. All right, so the really, really exciting, well, we've had some exciting. This piece surprised me. So this is a tiny little, like, demitasse or shot glass um, and it is enameled, hand enameled, okay? And the research that I did, I have not found any this small. I have found wine glasses and decanters and like pitcher type things. So much bigger pieces with this pattern and they sell in the 50 to 150 range. Um, what I can gather, the glass is Salviati and the application, the paint is Moser. And what it says, um, on there it is uh, sorry not what it says what I wrote down um, the the pattern it's canine and foliate so basically some sort of a canine critter and leaves foliage flowers canine and foliate pattern um, Moser uh, hand decorated um, yeah 
So that's really exciting. I, I can't put a value on it other than the wine glass that I found that was like this was 50. So it's probably gonna be less than that because it's smaller. On the other hand, I don't know how common or rare it is. So that may affect the value as well. So that was really exciting because there were a lot of these other shot glasses that are worth like eight to $12 and this was among them and this is worth more than that. So that was fun to learn about. And then I got a couple different, um, these are, I believe, Bohemian, um, which means, you know, from Czechoslovakia or Czech glass. This is a couple partridges. Now, I don't know if this is the same group. There was, um, there's some Rowland, R-O-W-L-A-N-D, listed online that are, um, so I, maybe it's not Czech. Um, there's some that are listed online that are like safari scenes, and they have the same like the same shape and the same like egg shaped little um, indentations at the bottom, but the picture are like other critters than partridges. But I guess partridges could theoretically be safari type thing. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know, but I would say eight to 12 on this glass. Um, I have found similars. I just don't know a lot about it yet. There's a lot of things it could be but um, none of them are worth a whole lot of money. Then I got this tiny one. Um, this I think is probably also, oh, I'm not gonna guess. This one is a thicker glass. It is much thicker. Um, I have listed it as Bohemian um, with the flash glass and the etching, but I don't have any information on it. Uh, again, you know, six, eight, 10, 12, something like that. I, I don't really know. And then I just have this plain glass that I know nothing about. Um, oh, I forgot to show you. There's one more that I still am trying to do some research on. Um, again, this one is bringing up a different, like a glasses that look the same, but this connection is different. And all of those are expensive. They're in 35 to $70 range and up. Um, but I think this is different than that. So I don't wanna say that this is the same as that. So I've gotta get more information on this piece as well. These are all things I'm going to ask experts if I can't figure things out myself. And I may end up lotting them together um, in a lot of glassware um, if they all are very low value pieces. This is another one. It's a big light purplish glass. They remind me of the glasses you would see in the cupboard of friends when, you know, when I was a kid. Um, so I don't think it's anything too special, but again, I've got to get confirmation before I, uh, you know, before I make any harsh decisions. Um, it could be a vase as well. It's uh, just a very nice, good quality drinking glass or vase. Um, and again, eight to 12, because I just don't know anything. So that is my guess. And the last piece, again, I know nothing about um, is this, this glass with these beautiful crosses. Um, and the, the metal on these is actually pressed into the glass and all of these stripey things actually come forward from where the metal is. So it's, it's kind of fun. I don't know how they would have done this. Um, it's just a really cool piece. So this one I'm definitely gonna ask about. Um, I'm not finding anything that's close uh, when I Google lens it. Um, same with all of these other little ones I was, I was showing you. So that's basically the haul this week. Um, my total spend of these two lots without counting the auction premium was $63. The premium that they um, they put a 20%, it's 19.75% or something on top of it. Um, so that would be another, what, $13 or so. So 76 maybe for the whole bit. Um, and then um, my what I think it's worth, and again, I estimated so conservatively, um, and I think there was one piece I didn't even put a number in, but I came up with $560. It may be more. I mean, there's a couple pieces in there, a few pieces in there with some some real value. Um, so turning you know, 63 or 70, whatever, into 560 is really good. That's like more than eight times um, the value. And you know, I'm, I'm excited. I got a couple pieces of Fenton here that I can add to my Fenton haul. And I'll have more that I'll show you next week. So thankfully I kept this video to 30 minutes this week, yay me. And um, 
I look forward to sharing next week's haul with y'all. And I actually did find a few pieces, um, I guess this past weekend that I'll include next week. Um, and then I'm going to do some shopping on my travels. So yeah, look, uh, look forward to that because I, I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to find out there. All right, y'all have a great week and we will see you soon. Bye.